Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today, I've got something really interesting to share with you. Did you know that 75% of self-made billionaires have had direct sales experience? That's right, they've all dabbled in the world of sales before making it big. Now, you may be wondering why that is, and in this video, I'm going to reveal the three key skills that sales cultivates and how they can lead to massive success. But before we dive in, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Squarespace. They've helped me renovate my website, improvementpill.net, and it has made a huge impact in my online presence. You can head over there to check out my reading list and so much more. The first skill that sales teaches you is a strong belief in work ethic. Unlike many other jobs where your pay is the same regardless of how hard you work, in sales, your income is directly tied to your efforts. And let me tell you, when you see that correlation day in and day out, it instills a powerful belief that hard work will be rewarded. This belief becomes deeply ingrained, making you more disciplined and willing to work hard, even when the outcome is uncertain. And that's why sales experience can be a game changer when it comes to pursuing your goals and achieving success. Next up, we have social skills. Think about it, in sales, you're constantly interacting with potential customers, and you only have a short window of time to make a lasting impression. So, your social skills need to be on point. You need to be confident, relatable, and genuinely interested in the other person. These skills not only help you close sales but also build relationships, which is crucial in business and networking. As the saying goes, your network is your net worth, and sales experience gives you the tools to build a strong network. Lastly, we have the ability to deal with rejection. Let's be honest, getting rejected is never fun. Whether it's having doors slammed in your face or being yelled at by disgruntled customers, sales exposes you to all kinds of rejection. But here's the thing, the more you're exposed to rejection, the more resilient you become. You start to develop a thick skin and learn not to take rejection personally. This skill is invaluable because it allows you to take risks, face your fears, and bounce back after setbacks. It's this resilience that sets successful people apart from the rest. So, there you have it, the three key skills that make sales experience a stepping stone to success a strong work ethic, social skills, and the ability to deal with rejection. It's no wonder that so many self-made billionaires have a background in sales. Now, I want to ask you a question. After hearing about these three skills, which one do you think you need to work on the most? Is it your work ethic, your social skills, or your ability to handle rejection? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. But wait, before you go, I have one last exciting announcement. If you found this video valuable and you want to show your support, you can now give a tip proportional to the value you've received. Simply click the link in the description to contribute. Your generosity will help us continue creating informative and engaging content for you. So, that's it for today. Remember, success is within your reach, and with the right skills and mindset, you can achieve greatness. Until next time, stay ambitious and keep striving for success. Hey guys, it's Max Sterling here, and today we're going to delve into the art of haggling. Now, haggling may seem intimidating to some, but I'm here to give you some amazing tips that will empower you to haggle better than ever before. But first, let's address the elephant in the room. Many people hesitate to haggle because they feel like they're intruding or being impolite. Well, let me tell you, that couldn't be further from the truth. Haggling is all about negotiating a fair deal that benefits both you and the seller. So let's dive into the tips and tricks that will help you master the art of haggling. Tip number one, do your research. Before you even step foot into a negotiation, you need to know your stuff. Take the time to research the product you're interested in and figure out what a fair price would be. Check out online marketplaces like eBay or Amazon to get a sense of the range of prices for similar items. This will give you a solid baseline to work with when you start negotiating. Next, it's important to build rapport with the salesperson. Remember the saying, people do business with people they like. 
well, it holds true in the world of haggling as well. So, when you first meet the salesperson, start by asking for their name. Use their name frequently throughout the conversation. This simple trick creates a sense of familiarity and friendliness, making the negotiation process much smoother. Now, here comes tip number three. Patience is key. Don't rush into negotiations. Take your time to get to know the salesperson and let them teach you about the product. Ask questions, show genuine interest, and create a friendly atmosphere. By doing so, you're not only building rapport but also gaining valuable insights and information that will come in handy during the negotiation process. Once you've established a solid foundation, it's time to stand your ground. Don't be afraid to negotiate and express your thoughts and concerns. Remember, the goal is to arrive at a deal that provides value to both parties. So, if something doesn't feel right or if the price is too high, speak up. A good salesperson will appreciate your honesty and be willing to work with you to find a solution. Now, let's talk numbers. When it comes to offering your price, aim for a figure that is slightly lower than what you're actually willing to pay. This gives you some room to negotiate and still end up with a favorable deal. And remember, after you've made your offer, let the salesperson respond first. Don't fill the silence with unnecessary chatter. This shows confidence and puts the ball in their court. And now, the moment of truth, clinching the deal. Remember, no salesperson will kick you out of their shop for negotiating down a price. As long as you maintain a friendly and respectful demeanor, negotiations can lead to incredible savings. The feeling of fulfillment you get from getting a better than average deal is not just about the money saved. It's about challenging yourself and coming out victorious. So there you have it, my friend. These tips and tricks should set you on the path to becoming a haggling master. Remember, practice makes perfect. So get out there, apply these strategies, and watch your negotiation skills soar. Now, if this video has added value to your life and you found these tips helpful, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And if you have any additional thoughts or questions, leave a comment below. I love hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy haggling. And hey, if you found this video valuable and it helped you save some serious cash, consider giving a tip proportional to the value you receive. Your support is greatly appreciated. The link can be found in the video description. Alright, let's talk about diets. Now, you must know that diets aren't the solution to keeping the weight off. If your goal is long-term weight management, lifestyle changes are key. However, diets can still be fun to learn about and may be useful in certain situations. In this video, we'll explore some popular eating styles that you may find interesting. Please note that I am not promoting any of these diets, but rather introducing them to you for informational purposes. First up, we have the 3-hour diet, created by fitness expert George Cruz. This diet requires you to eat 5 times a day, focusing on lean foods and portion control. You are allowed to enjoy your favorite sweet and salty foods at specific times. By eating small meals every 3 hours, you boost your body's fat-burning potential. This diet comes with 4 rules. Eat breakfast within an hour of waking up. Eat every 3 hours. Stop eating 3 hours before bedtime. And stick to recommended portion sizes. Some people report losing 10 pounds in the first 2 weeks and 2 pounds every week after that while still maintaining muscle mass. Next is the cookie diet. Yes, you heard it right. This diet literally only requires cookies. However, not just any cookies. You have to choose and buy specific cookies for breakfast, lunch, and snacks. This diet can be quite expensive, with some companies charging up to $300 for a two-week supply. While dinner can be cooked on your own, portion sizes still matter. This diet is low in calories, so you may feel hungry at first. Exercise is encouraged but not specified. The cookie diet works well for busy individuals who want to lose a little weight quickly. Moving on to the fat flush diet, 
developed by nutritionist Anne Louise Gittleman. This diet combines weight loss and detox into a low-carb, restricted calorie eating plan. The theory is that the right combination of foods and a specific eating schedule will increase your metabolism and enhance fat burning. The diet comes in three phases, detox, ongoing weight loss, and lifestyle eating for long-term weight control. The detox phase is the most restrictive, followed by a gradual reintroduction of carbs in the second phase. Regular exercise is important, especially in the third phase. Now, let's talk about the skinny bitch diet, also known as the military diet. This diet is designed for rapid weight loss over a short period. Some people report losing 10 or more pounds in just one week. The three-day diet is clearly laid out in the proprietary Skinny Bitch book, with affordable, quick, and easy-to-prepare meals. After three days, it is important to not go crazy and eat whatever you want but to stay under 1500 calories a day for the next four days before starting the three-day diet again. The South Beach diet focuses on choosing the right carbs and fats instead of eliminating them altogether. It is a three-step program created by Arthur Agatston to help his patients lose weight and lower their cholesterol. The diet comes with different phases, each with specific dietary guidelines. Exercise is not mandatory, and all your food can be found at local stores and restaurants. For those looking for a plant-based diet, the vegan diet eliminates all animal products, including meat, fish, eggs, and dairy. It requires careful planning to meet all nutritional needs, especially for vitamins like B12 and D. The key is to focus on a variety of fruits, vegetables, and whole foods. While it may be more costly depending on your location, it can be a healthier and more sustainable option. If you're interested in raw foods, the raw food diet may be for you. This diet revolves around eating mostly uncooked, unprocessed, and organic foods, with a temperature limit of 118 degrees Fahrenheit. It requires a higher level of effort as you need to amp up your cooking skills, and eating out can be challenging. It is important to be cautious about food safety to avoid any foodborne illnesses. Lastly, we have the blood type diet, where your blood type determines the optimal eating plan for you. This diet claims that eating according to your blood type will improve digestion, aid weight loss, and prevent diseases. However, it requires high effort, especially for blood types with restrictive diets. It is crucial to know your blood type before starting this diet. Now, let me share a bit about my own diet and lifestyle choices. I start my mornings with a